Hi, Grade 5. You'll be happy to see my hair's growing back, but also, welcome to my dining room. Since we've got a bit of a weird situation going on right now, I don't want you to lose track of all the math stuff we would have been doing. Uh, this week, our activity is based around the concept of volume, which we haven't really explored yet in class, so I thought I'd record a short video about it so that you could see what exactly I'm talking about here. So, here it comes. Okay, so so far we've talked a lot about area and perimeter. How perimeter is a one-dimensional measurement and area is a two. That means that for perimeter, we're really just measuring one straight line, even though that straight line happens to be wrapped around an object. So this right here is one centimeter. We're going to say this is a centimeter. It is actually roughly a centimeter on my computer, but I don't know what size it is on your screen. For one centimeter here, we can tell that that is just one side of the square. So even though we can measure one centimeter for this, it's not going to wrap around the entire thing. We need a few more sides. If I were to rotate them, you can see that this would actually wrap all the way around the square if we put them together. Two sides. And there we go. We've got our square. If I unwrap that and turn it all into one big line, I know that this line could wrap around the square. Three and four sides. I'm going to put this all together, call it one square so that you can see it that way or call it one line. The perimeter of the square in one dimension is four centimeters long. So I can say the perimeter P equals four centimeters. Since I'm only measuring centimeters, nice and easy. I apologize for my writing, it's hard to do on the screen. Now that's all well and good so far. You should know by the time you're in grade 5 that to measure the perimeter of something is just to add up all of its sides. Area is a little bit trickier, but should still be review. Area, we're talking about two dimensions. Now, to do this, we're talking about length and width. In this case, length is, let me go to pen mode, length is along here, or here, and width is the other one. As long as you're taking these two dimensions together and multiplying them together, you'll find out how many squares would fit inside. Area equals, I'm going to use a capital L here because we might be using a 1 in a second, L times W. In this case, our length is 1, and our width is 1. And I shouldn't need to tell a grade 5 that 1 times 1 is 1. In this case, I've got 1 centimeter, that's the unit I'm using, and I'm talking about how many squares fit inside it. So I can say centimeter squared, and a handy tip to remember that is since we're measuring in two dimensions right now, I put a little two up there to remind me of it. So one centimeter in two dimensions, or one centimeter squared. Now let's go for a quick example to show us that things change pretty quickly when we're talking about more than one at a time. Here I've got two. Two centimeters. And another two. Well, again, shouldn't need to tell a grade 5. In this case, 2 times 2. So that is 4 centimeters squared. So far, so good. This ends the review portion of what we've been doing. Now that's great for 1 centimeter. And that's great for area. But we actually want to talk now about 3D objects. Objects that have a bit of depth. So here's 1 centimeter. That's just a centimeter squared, one by one by one. I could prove it with a ruler if I want to, but you can probably take my word for it. I measured. 
Now, we want to talk about if this was three dimensions. So we need to talk now about how many cubes are going to fit inside of it. Just like with our area, this just means multiplying by one more thing. So for perimeter, you don't multiply one dimension. For area, you multiply two things together, two dimensions. And now for volume, we're going to have to multiply three different numbers together. We need to figure out the area of the bottom, so side times side, and then multiply that by how tall it is. In this case, that's three. I've left the side open so you can see how this is going to work. Now our bottom layer, if it's only one centimeter tall, you can see we've got one square, one tall. That means we can fit one cube in there. But every time we add another centimeter to the height, see the lines on there? Well, we could fit one cube, then two cubes, then three cubes. So to put this all together, to find volume, we need to take the area of the bottom, length times width, and then multiply it by the height. Area of the bottom times how many layers that area is stacked. So let's take an example of that on the smart board. Okay, let's talk volume now. So last time we looked at this, we saw that by finding the area of one side and seeing how deep or how tall that goes, we're able to figure out the volume. Now that's really, really easy when we look at something that is just one cube. I've got one cube here, and I know it goes back one deep, so I've got one times one times one for depth. Well, what's one times one times one? It's one centimeter. However, this time we need to remember we're not in one dimension, we're not in two dimensions, we're in three dimensions. So we'll say it's one centimeter cubed. Easy, easy, easy. Now it's going to get a little bit trickier because we're not going to be working with just once. So, first thing we need to do is find the area of one side. Actually, I'm going to really quickly get rid of this guy. Okay. So let's take a look here. We're just going to work with the front first off. So I need to know this, and I need to know this. Now, hopefully it's pretty easy to tell because I've got this blocked off that the area of this is one, two, three, four centimeters times one, two, three, four centimeters. Now, I could count if I really want to double check myself, or I could trust that I know that four times four, four times four equals 16. But we can double check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 centimeters, and I'm in two dimensions now, I'm counting squares. 16 centimeters squared. Now that's fine, but I can also see now that this goes back. And it goes back, I'll count along the top, because it's a little bit bigger to draw on. One, two, three, four layers. So my depth here is another four centimeters. Now, if I've got 16 on the front layer, I also have 16 in each of those four layers back. So now I need to multiply it again. I've got four centimeters times four centimeters for the front times another four centimeters for the rest of this cube. So let's take our area from the front, 16 centimeters squared, and multiply it by another four centimeters. This might take a little bit more drawing, 
You might trust my mental math, but I'll prove it to you. 16 times 4. Again, apologies for my writing. Learning how to do this on a laptop screen for the first time. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 1 is 4, plus those two tens that I just carried over is 6. So now I've got 64 centimeters, and I'm not talking about a line, I'm not talking about squares, I'm talking about cubes. So, measure the area of one side, multiply that by how far back or how tall whatever your third dimension is, and you found the three-dimensional volume of your shape in units cubed. In this case, our unit is centimeters. Okay, that'll wrap it up for now. Once again, I apologize that this was kind of amateurish as an online video goes. I don't have the best tools on my teacher laptop and am having to work with a basic touch pen and smart notebook software, but here we go. The important thing for right now is that you guys all recognize that for rectangular shapes, rectangular prisms and cubes, we talk about the area of the bottom, which is length times width, same as we've always been doing, and then it's just that stacked. Layers of area. We could also get the layer of the front and count how far back it goes. Either one of those will be fine because either way you're multiplying three things together. Length, width, and height. You do that, you found your volume. If you have any questions, you know where to get in touch with me. Bye.